We spoke with Sue Robinson from EY about gender parity. Hi Sue, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi. So first up, what is gender pay gap reporting? So gender pay gap reporting is really important at the moment because it's a legal requirement for employers to make a report by the 4th of April 2018. And what they need to report is if there are any disparities between male and female pay. So on that note, what's the difference between gender pay gap reporting and equal pay? There's been a lot of confusion in the press recently. Um, gender pay is all about making sure that, broadly speaking, men and women of the same grade get paid the same. Equal pay is looking more at the job. So if you have a man and a woman in the same job, you need to make sure that they're paid um, the equivalent rates. Okay. So it's pay versus job. So you mentioned there's a reporting deadline coming up in April this year. Why is it that some companies have reported early and some of them haven't yet done so? I think that's kind of human nature. So the ones that think they're good, the ones that think their gender pay gap is not that high, have kind of rushed off the, the blocks and tried to report early because mm -hmm. they want to look good in, in terms of their competitors. And I think most of those that have delayed is either because they're a bit worried in terms of what their gender pay gap is going to be, or you do have some of the diligent ones who've recognised that the regulations are quite tricky and they want to make sure that they're absolutely accurate. So you've got like two different reasons, some for good and some not so good. Do you think um, image and reputation is a real issue in the tech industry? Well, I think it's absolutely vital because I think tech is seen as one of the kind of sexy industries to be part of. Um, and people are really conscious these days of wanting to work for a good employer. Um, and a good employer is one that treats people fairly, whether they're male, female, or whatever the diversity issue. So it's absolutely crucial that in the tech industry, things like gender parity are absolutely taken into account. It's a very topical subject at the moment, but why would some tech startups here in the UK that employ less than 250 people have to worry about the reporting side of it? Um, everybody seems to be focusing on the headlines, which is, you know, let's look at um, the difference between what's being paid to males and females. But the underlying issue is making sure that you get a diverse workforce. So if you're, if you're, you're starting out in business, you want to get the best skilled workforce that you possibly can. And it's a total nonsense that all the skills sit with um, sort of males. Mm. You know, obviously a diverse workforce is going to get you a much better skilled workforce and your business is more likely to flourish. In your opinion, how can tech entrepreneurs ensure that they enforce diversity in the workplace? I think there are a number of things. I think things like making sure that um, the atmosphere is right, which sounds an odd thing, but you know, people don't just come to work just for pay. They wouldn't come if they weren't paid, but the atmosphere that you work in has to be right. So, you know, not a butch kind of atmosphere or something that, that a, a woman wouldn't be comfortable working in. And then the, the policies, again, not necessarily around pay, but making sure that flexible working, for instance, you know, if you've got, um, you've got women with children, you've got men with children, so why not encourage men perhaps to take um, paternity leave and just not have ma maternity leave? So some of those sorts of things would be great. Training, um, things like um, making sure that there's no unconscious bias is really important. And looking closely at your recruitment, and again, just checking that there isn't any unconscious bias in the terms of the way that you're recruiting people that are coming through. So quite a few things you can do that aren't necessarily just directly related to pay. I would actually direct people to um, the sites online, so ACAS and both the government's um, .gov sites give some really clear guidelines in terms of what you need to report. I think the challenges are in terms of actually some of the definitions in terms of what's an employee how you actually cut the pay data. So getting into the detail is where the challenges lie. Is it simply a male versus female issue or do we have to make sure that the industry becomes more inclusive in general? I think to start with, we do need to address the fact that there aren't enough women in and there aren't enough women at senior levels. Absolutely, we need to deal with that. But I think we do need to be a bit careful because I think longer term, this isn't about women taking over the role, uh, the world. I think it's about men and women working together. Um, I have this view in terms of masculine and feminine traits. So I think you can have a man who has what we would typically talk about feminine traits, some of the softer skills, 
and you can have women who have much more of what we would call the masculine um, kind of skills, like the really driven, kind of hard and focused. And I think that actually, if you look at those traits, you need a balance of both the softer and the harder skills, whether they're in men or whether they're in women. So I think going forward, we want men and women to work together. But as a starting point, we need to have much more focus on getting women as in senior roles and in the C-suite. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your time, Steve. It's a pleasure.